Welcome to the introduction to Pulse Screencast. In this screencast, we will be introducing you to the basics of what Pulse is and how to get started using it, all for free. Just as a reminder, in order to customize your profiles as we will be showing in the screencast, you do need to register for a free account to use Pulse, but that only requires a valid email address. You can even use Pulse completely anonymously, but you're only able to use the pre-configured profiles and cannot configure them yourself. Okay, let's get started. When you launch Pulse after entering in your account information, you'll be taken to the Pulse Explorer screen. From here you can completely create, manage, and delete any and all profiles you have associated with your account. You can modify the software that belongs to the profiles, add more software, or remove software from those profiles. To begin, you always have to pick a profile or a base piece of software to begin with. In this case, let's start with the Eclipse Europa for Java profile. Once we find the profile we want, there are a lot of pre-configured profiles to choose from. We just drag and drop them onto the My Profiles node in the tree on the left hand side of the screen. You can also just select the profile and click Run. This will automatically add the profile to your My Profiles list as well. Now that we have our profile, we can begin adding software to it. You can add software many different ways to a profile. You can use the software catalog, you can use your own custom update site, or you can simply unzip plugins directly into the profile's add-ons directory. We are going to use the expansive software catalog that comes in Pulse to add software to our profile now. While you are welcome to browse the catalog, it's fairly large and using the search bar at the top of the screen will help us find what we want faster. Let's add some version support to our Java development profile as well as the AnyEdit Tools plugin which has a lot of nice editing controls. As we use search to find those things in the catalog, we just drag and drop them onto the Java development profile to add them. Some software in the catalog, like Mylan, has additional pieces of software related to it. For example, additional integration modules. When you add a piece of software that has related parts to it, you'll be prompted to add those additional pieces of software if you would like. Now that we are done adding software to our profile, if we select it, we see the new additions to this profile under the additional software portion of the screen. From here you can add more software to the profile. Some pieces of software may have a plus button next to them. You can click this to add related software to the profile as well. Now that our profile is all ready to be used, we can simply click the run button to launch it. At this point, Pulse will evaluate the completed profile, resolving any and all dependencies required to run it. Part of the process may include downloading new pieces of software, updating existing ones, or removing software from a profile at runtime. For new pieces of software added, we will be prompted to accept any and all new licenses that apply to our profile, and then we can continue. Once we've accepted the licenses, Pulse will ask us where we want to place the install folder for the profile as well as where we want to place the common plugin cache folder for all the plugins. The common plugin cache folder can only be selected the first time any profile is run and will contain a union of all the plugins required to run all of your provisioned profiles. The installation directory can be configured for every new profile and will represent the profile specific artifacts like a standalone Eclipse executable which will have a shortcut automatically added to your start menu for you when you run the profile for the first time. After you accept the install and common cache directories, Pulse will begin provisioning your profile for you. This will include communicating with any and all update sites required to retrieve the plugins necessary to run the configured profile. This download will only occur the first time you run a profile with new software requirements, or if there are any updates available to an existing profile. All subsequent times you run a profile, it will start immediately. Even faster is to use the shortcut Pulse creates for you from your start menu. After Pulse has finished provisioning the profile, the workbench will start up. After entering in our workspace directory, just like a normal Eclipse install, our workbench pops up ready to be used. To confirm that our profile is running correctly, we can close the welcome screen and go open the SVN perspective that Subclips provides, and we see here that Subclips is installed correctly. The last thing for us to check is to make sure any edit tools was installed correctly. 
We can check that by opening the AnyEdit Preference screen from the Preference dialog. As you see here, AnyEdit is installed and ready for action. That concludes our introduction to using Pulse. We hope you found it helpful. We want to remind you that while Pulse can be used to provision Eclipse installs, as we looked at today, it can also be used to provision and manage entire workspaces, including projects, preferences, and repositories. All these profiles you create can be shared with coworkers, groups, and teams of people, with full control over who has permission to manage those profiles within a team. We would encourage you to download Pulse and play with it. All of the features we looked at today are completely free to use as long as you want, even sharing with your team. For information on more advanced functionality, please check out the other screencasts we offer on our Pulse site. Thank you for watching.